I don't. I, if you went to see Collective Soul, would you go if you got free tickets? Yeah, dude, they had bangers, dude. Are you serious? What's your favorite Collective Soul song, dude? Uh, what the uh, Jail is probably a banger. Sing it. Uh, that's the one we're talking about. And turn your head now, baby, baby just spin me out. out. Don't right. turn around. Okay. Do they no. have do shine? They have, shine. Yep. Same song, different words. Yeah. We talk December. Of- December. Bro, the world I know. All right. Heavy okay. where the river flows. Okay. Yeah, okay, you made your point. That's a banger, dude. It is a banger. Okay. That's like the time I went to see uh, Third Eye Blind and every song I knew. And dude, I was- that Third Eye Blind record yeah. is every song is a banger. Yeah. Every song. There was like six radio hits off that one album. Dude, people don't give them enough credit. I mean, they've been working consecutively off one album since the 90s. They didn't take it. They're not doing festivals, 90s, best of the 90s. They're like still, you know. I saw them at the Greek that you hate. Yeah. Hmm. I think that they do get enough credit because they're not lumped into that like one hit wonder package. Well, they did come out with more than one record. Yeah. They had one. uh, What is it? Is it Motorcycle Drive By? Uh, But they didn't have any hits. The uh, the self-titled had like. Graduate, right? Graduate, narcolepsy. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's semi charm kind of life. Uh, um, I wish you would step back from that. The graduate, the jumper, the jumper. Good night. Everything starts with the. They had bang, dude. That's like dude. Eve Six's first record. Yeah, exactly. Eve Six had that. Or, or you, Boston from the seventies. Yeah. Nine out of ten songs were number one hits. Yeah, that's crazy. Or uh, sorry, seven out of that's eight. That's crazy. Eight. He's leaving, guys. He's oh leaving. yeah, I thought you said this was over. No, I haven't finished the intro yet. Let's start it over. Ready? He's got to pee and his dog has to pee. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the Isaac Amers Show, everybody. I'm your host, Isaac Amers. Today's very special guest returning for the third time, Justin Foster, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Morning Zoo Radio. Boop, 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 boop. Call number five, tickets that's, to collect a soul. That's right. In this episode, we talk about uh, Morning Zoo Radio. We talk about touring together, me and him, doing the funny haha stuff. We make fun of me for being angry. Very angry man. I'm not. Yes. Say it again. Target pills. Say it one Happy- more Time. Say it one more time. See, angry. I gotta bleep that f word out now. Angry. Uh, and you know, and we just riff. We riff on music. Riff. We riff on Corey Feldman. He tells me I was his favorite guest that he's ever had on this show. I never said that. He we did. talk about Fred Durst and how important he is to Limp Biscuit. Yeah, he's the same. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Limp Biscuit wouldn't be the same without Fred Durst. You ever think about that? <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Call it him five. Yeah, we had a great time chatting. Uh, me and Justin go way back, one one whole year. And we had a lot of fun catching up from being off the road for a little bit. Uh, enjoy the episode. Justin, thank you for being here. Please follow Justin at... The Justin Foster. T-H-E, Justin Foster. And check out his special that we worked so very hard on. On YouTube. On YouTube called... Cheap Date. Cheap Date, YouTube.com slash Justin Foster. The Justin Foster. The Justin Foster. There is a the in every title. Or the. Or is it the or the? Ooh, the would be two E's. The. The would be T-H-A. The just. Huh? You know, like Charlemagne the God. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Put Justin, but the S is a dollar sign. That's right. Let's go. Okay. Enjoy it, everybody. Collective Soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know he's saying that through a toilet paper roll? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Remember, uh, Bud? Why? But was at the best commercials. Remember the, uh, why that? Why that? I made a Spuds McKenzie reference the other day at a bar on the street. It was like that. And I was like, nothing, never mind. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking, yeah. We're, we're back on morning radio. Yeah. Zany, caller number five gets free tickets to Nickelback yeah, and yeah. A Collective Soul. Yeah. And then I would have a story about Nickelback. So, Charles, you have an interesting relationship with Nickelback, huh? I sure do. Oh, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the two guys from The Simpsons, the toilet's always flushing. <laughs> caller number five. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Get those dialing fingers ready. I'm two dBs hotter than you. Hold on. Add uh, copy examples. Ready? Okay. Yep. Uh, so then they go. Because uh, then you have to make it look like um, you have to make it look like you're like you're not selling the. Pr- you know what I mean? You're like you ever you ever. Uh, what are you talking about? You ever like wake up and just you're using your computer and you just really wish you had a spreadsheet that you could put all your information on? I sure do. Just well, Microsoft has a new spreadsheet that you can download for. <laughs> Tell me more about that. Yeah, well, it's right here. <laughs> you can always hear the paper shuffling. 
My buddy has this theory about morning radio or radio in general that we're all disconnected, right? They were all on our phones and we're all in our own world. But the ra- the collective radio is like we're all sharing something together mm-hmm. and that we're desperately missing that by doing Spotify and like not doing it anymore. We're missing the mind numbing just the connectedness Say, saying words to be just to be said no we're all hearing the same song at the same time we're all it's a uh, experience now we're all in our own little world yes uh, you know that's called mean? appointment entertainment i don't know well i know i do know it's like when seinfeld's on at eight right we all have to sit down at eight o'clock and watch it right that's, exactly that's appointment entertainment we're appointment sharing television. at the same time right right Mm-hmm. So then you call your friend at 8 30 and you're like, dude. Bro, Chappelle Show. Remember yeah. when Chappelle Show would air and you would like, dude, that was the funny and you would talk about it yeah. for a week. The Sopranos came on every night. Sopranos, Sunday, Sunday. Every Sunday night. Exactly. We would have Sopranos Sundays where we'd eat like spaghetti and yeah. watch Sopranos. Yeah, it was a thing. So I thought we were the only people to think about that. No. We had wine and spaghetti every Sunday. Mm. Gabagool. Gabagool. Yeah. Gabagool. And then. But and especially in school too, like you would watch like whatever aired the night before. I remember when it yeah. came out. You oh. were about the same. I remember when it came out, and yeah. dude, the next day everyone's in school just like scared. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, do you remember that? Do you see it? Yeah. But now it's like people. Well, I'll just I'll just watch it all on my phone when it all all the yeah. episodes come out. And, yeah. And now if you don't binge it, the minute it comes out, you're everything's out ruined. of the conversation. Right. Yeah. I hey, I haven't seen all nine episodes. Right. I, you know, I have a life. And but and still, it's hard to find something to watch. Yeah, when I know. you sit down, I know unlimited choices. I know, and I always go to. It's just always back to the Simpsons or like a Marvel movie. Like I don't, I have all yeah. these streaming, and I just watch the same five things. I'm rewatching Mash right now. You are very old. Um, yeah, I've actually, but like that's the thing too. Is like, <laughs> you are, are, are you really watching Mash right now? Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, but that's the thing too. Is like, if you like, I have stuff to do. I yeah. can't watch all twelve episodes of the thing. Right. And now I can't talk to you? Right. No, don't talk. To, don't talk to me. Oh, I can't hear. I, don't, da, 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 don't talk to me. Sorry. No, if you haven't seen the new Doodle Floppers. Right. Season three. Right. You ever do that where people don't care anymore? Where you're like, you, do you actually find something that's really good and people just go out? You're like, no, it's yeah. like, this great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't, you, yeah. Yeah. Don't even tell me. Don't tell me about it. They're not going to watch it. No. Right. I'm uh, I'm more well versed on, uh, I call them Hot People Island. Yeah. Because uh, my lady loves them. She yeah. just wants to watch hot, Oh yeah. Uh Death of the Hot People and Hot People Island 2 and like Love I, Island, uh yeah. Too Hot to Handle. And listen. I love the ex- I love the excuse. I'm like we're going to watch 24-year-old extremely hot men and women mm-hmm. make out with each other while we eat this pizza. Right. It's weird that you put men first, but okay. Well, yeah. I put the emphasis on you know what I mean? men, you know. Yeah. Look, I need a I need a ghost beard, you know what I mean? Like I <laughs> I like looking at hot dudes. Yeah. And I like to try and figure out if they have alcohol in their cups. The the answer is yes. I don't know. The you never yes. see them drunk. The you never yes. see them sloppy drunk. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Those shows where they're on the island and they go to the house parties at night. That's all fake. No. Yep. No. No. They're dancing and making eye contact with the camera. Well, because they, they're not actors. They're not trained not to look at the camera. They're... Dude, I'm telling you, nah. I don't think you ever get drunk before and there's a camera there. You stare right at. It. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But those abs, those fantastic abs, those washboard, I, smooth, you're telling me, bumpy ripples right above the man meat. Mm-hmm. Those don't come from alcohol. Sure, you can't. Those drink. dudes drink vodka, vodka water, whiskey water. Nah. Yes. 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 No. They don't drink like you and I. Don't put me in your category. Well, they don't drink like I drank 12 beers and trying to have abs. No. But they'll drink like whiskey, water. Trust me. You think if you have abs, you don't drink alcohol? I know. I That I, is false. Seriously? Uh, call in right now. Actually, you're going to get free tickets to Collective Soul. <laughs> the first three people that call in right now. All right. I rescind my former statement because I have driven up and down West Hollywood. Dude, those dudes have six packs and they're they hammered every night. Shit faced. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Have you ever had abs? I have them now for the first time in my entire Shut life. Shut up. The first time. It took me 44 years to get abs. How many? I have three right now. Which side? Two. Yeah. And then here. And then the rest ones, they're like uh, thinking about it. Okay. Yeah. The other ones are like, all right. We're, I all got right. them under here. Yeah. I just got to peel back the layer of fat. Yeah. It's all diet. It is all diet. Yeah. And but we just had the biggest breakfast burrito i've ever fucking pretty seen. good that's my only meal today but yeah i got abs for the first time it took me 44 years to get three abs and but it's also like six days in the gym yeah what's your workout regiment 
Uh, it's Mondays is legs, Tuesdays is arms, Wednesdays is abs, Thursday is full body, Friday is <laughs> back to arms, Saturday is rest. I'm sorry I asked. Sunday is full body. I am an all, all body all, every day guy. Yeah, back, shoulder. But I walk to the gym and back, which is about 40 minutes each way. What a waste of time. So I do that six days a week now. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you don't want to lose your parking spot. Yeah, and I, yeah, <laughs> there's something very com comforting about walking on Hollywood Boulevard without, twice, six days a, a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be where the people are at. Yeah, yeah. You gotta just get down amongst the common plebeians and just. <laughs> I like walking on syringes and <laughs> feces. You know, that's my cardio. It's fear. Back, it's LA's back to what it looked like in the movies in the '80s, dude. I went downtown last night. Mm -hmm. It's like Gotham City. Yeah, it's like not even where it's like. You know when you see like a bunch of people and it's scary, it's like there's nobody, which is somehow even scarier. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's like a newspaper, yeah, like floating. Yeah, that's the tumbleweed. Of, exactly of, of urban. It's the movies. urban tumbleweed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's like one guy in the alley smoking a cigarette. You're right. like, I'm gonna die. And you look at him, and he's like, <laughs> You're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> and he somehow knows your name, Justin. He's like, whoa. Hey, Justin. Yeah. One more block. Ellie's like, back, baby. He's the Grim Reaper. <laughs> it is a zombie apocalypse down there, though. Yeah. I hadn't been downtown in a long time. And I was like, well, yeah. they go away at night, too, or they go to sleep. I found them. Yeah. Yeah. I would uh, sleep there. Okay. If you were a houseless person, think about that often. Yeah. Because what one, are we, I'm one bad show we, away from that. Yeah. What are we, two weeks away from that? Yeah. Uh, if you were, fuck it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with homeless. I'm pivoting. I have a thought. Okay. I think I had this thought yesterday. I think that in the era that you grew up in, we were we grew up in the eighties. Yeah, all the chauvinistic shit and all the other stuff that mm -hmm. we grew up with, and all the terminology, all the, all the R word, the F word. We should get to keep saying it, and all the new kids who decide that it's not okay, they should get to not say it. If you could say whatever you want, yeah, there's consequences. <laughs> yeah, I don't want consequences. Well, it's all right. I want to be able to say all the shit that I said in the eighties and nineties, right? And because I'm old now. Yeah, but you can. You ever see Gran Torino, whatever that movie was? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. I've been Clint Eastwood on the inside. You're my Clint whole Eastwood, life. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Am I really that grumpy? We talked about this at lunch today. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, ah. Yeah. I feel so happy on the inside. You're the happiest, grumpiest person I know. You're optimistic, but it's grumpy. Oh, you know what it is? You know what it is? I'm angry that more people don't believe in themselves. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> like, exactly. Like, I'm disappointed in you because you don't think that you can just do a headlining gig at an arena tomorrow night. Right. And it, I'm delusional. But, but Okay, but you get very, like, riled up. Yeah. Like, you would say, what am I supposed to do with lime and radishes? <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's a garnish. That was a throwaway thought. But, yeah, you're very passionate. But, yeah, it is very, like, I just don't understand why more people don't manifest shit. Like, yeah. All right. It's a very positive message, but it's coming from a very angry point of view. <laughs> Why don't you just fucking believe in yourself, you idiot? Yeah, what's wrong with you? And I just start going into all the words I'm not supposed to say that I want to say. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, I can bleep it. I just add some bleeps here. But somebody said that the yeah, well, never mind. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so somebody made a point the other day that the R word isn't a slur. It's actually. It's a statement of fact, but right. You, but I, I don't also want to. We don't play yeah, with that. I don't need to cut this out. Right. I had to cut out twenty minutes of Kenny Weber's episode because he talked about his porn career mm -hmm. and then asked me how much money it would take for uh, me to sexually pleasure another man with my mouth. You said free, right? Yeah, yeah. They have. Wait, wait. How did you describe him? <laughs> Six pack, supple body. I don't know what your description Washboard. of Love Island. Yeah, yeah. But it was Kenny, so it was more Santa Claus. I oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm also attracted to. Okay. <laughs> it comes out today on this episode. And we're back. Yay. We're back. We're back. Yeah. Yeah. Dee -dee -dee -dee. How about this? Yeah, it's been. Yeah. One week since. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we went to the show last night. It was all 90s. Uh, yes. Dance playing 90s. And everyone yes. I was with, as soon as the song would start, they would just look at me and I'd be like, Soul Asylum. Oh, they didn't know it? PJ Harvey. Were you with young people? No. No, no. They just didn't know it? They were just like, I don't know. Huh. Yeah. One guy was older than me. And he still didn't know. He would get it eventually. Oh. But like he'd be like a big like concrete blonde vampire. Is it because it was live or be Probably, yeah. Probably. Yeah. But there's just those hooks they had in the nineties where you're like, Oh, that's Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. That's you why you hear needed, it. You needed a lead guitar player back then. Mm -hmm. You're right. You gotta set the hook. Yeah. And catch the fish. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. fish. Yeah, man. If you could go back in time and see any live concert. 
Ooh. Where are you going? You gonna go see Smashing Pumpkins first concert? Probably. Where was, was it? Chicago? No, not their first concert, but there was they did Lollapalooza, I think it was like ninety four. I remember I was in high school and all my friends went because all my friends were in a, a grade above me. Mm -hmm. And all of my friends went to it and it was it was supposed to be Nirvana, but he you know, couldn't make it. And so they he were. He was unavailable. He was unavailable. What if I'm like, no, I don't know what yeah, happened. Yeah, so he had a scheduling <laughs> conflict, and so they he, they dropped out of that tour. But he was replaced yeah. with Smash Pumpkins, Beastie Boys, Wow, a Tribe Called Quest on the same show. L7, no Green Day, Busta Rhymes. How big? Is this? No, not Busta Rhymes. It was. Uh, I looked this up the other day. It's Lollapalooza. It was a touring show. Oh, Lollapalooza. I was yeah. Like, what club was that? And all my friends went to it and were like. Dude, it was like the best show ever. Yeah. And Pumpkins played main stage and second stage. They did a surprise thing on the second stage, and they played B-sides, and uh, that's the show. Oh, here it is. Ready? Pumpkins, Beastie Boys, George Clinton, and the P-Funk All-Stars, wow. The Breeders, A Tribe Called Quest, Nick Cave, L7, and the first band, Green Day. Was this 2000? No. This was 94. 94? 94. Oh, you were in middle school. I was in middle school. Yeah. High school. I graduated in 98, so first year of high school. I graduated in, well, I would have graduated in 98 if I graduated high school. Yeah, I barely did. I dropped out in 98. Did you? Mm -hmm. I was in there in 98, but I barely graduated. They told me to, oh, this is actually kind of funny. They told me to start waiting tables, and that would count as credit. What? I swear. Would you go to special ed school? No, I didn't go to special ed school. They told me I would have to take another year, so I dropped out that day, and I enrolled in adult nighttime high school. Yeah. And I ended up dating all the ladies all the single moms in the Sick. high school and i was i should have graduated two months early uh -huh. and i got two credits and quit that too so yeah good two credits short they pulled me aside they were like listen just come in the homeroom leave at like 10 no get a job somewhere and we'll count that as like work work up co-op credit and we'll you can graduate so i was like i think they knew they were like table winning for this guy for sure yeah you look like <laughs> I just picture you being bald in high school <laughs> with a much longer ZZ Top beard. You're like, this guy's a little ahead of his time. This guy should be a line cook somewhere for sure. Yep. Have yeah. you ever been a cook? Yeah, dude. I did. I worked at a breakfast place. I had to be there at 530 in the morning. Right after your radio job? Yeah. But I was like drinking a lot. And so I would show up either still drunk or extremely hungover and I'd have to make omelets like and I remember the spinach omelets oh. when you're like struggling mm -hmm. I remember one time I would sleep in my car I would stay up all night and I would like go and I would sleep in my car and they would knock on my window at That's like nice. five to like alright start your yeah. shift and I would just kind of stumble in and I was like 21 so no you, I was like 20 so you drunk drove to the... oh it was Texas like you're legally allowed to do that back oh, then oh right, it's a law yeah, yeah. and then um, but I remember one Halloween I was in my Halloween I had like a wig on and like makeup and I was at a trash can here and I was like throwing up and making spinach omelets uh, it, was a, it was a nightmare health code you, violation were you Popeye the sailor man yeah I was rough oh. I actually look like that today yeah. um, where's Waldo <laughs> I look like I should be like putting people like uh, what is the I look like my chair is <laughs> malfunctioning what are the, the gondola guys oh yeah in Italy <laughs> yeah I should just be taking people down the yeah. river the except, canals except you're just in Vegas <laughs> I got a big baguette um, yeah, so that was rough. They closed uh, probably the numerous health code violations of having an underage kid throwing up on the line. Incredible staffing decisions. That was rough. It was the busiest shift. It was mm. like the day after Halloween or something. I don't know. We were like slammed, and I like yeah. couldn't get out of it. So they're like, "You got to come in." I'm yeah, like, I'm, I'm Bre the breakfast shift. Anthony Bourdain talks about it in both of his uh, his books. Oh, really? That I listened to and not read. But he's like, "Dude, you get a job at a new restaurant, no matter how big you are, you're running brunch for a couple shifts, a couple <sighs> weeks." It was rough. Because the, the A team is on Friday night, Saturday night. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get up four hours later and make you an omelet. No. Yeah. I don't think I could have ever made it as a cook. But I think if I had started down that way, I would have never stopped. Yeah, it's slippery slope because you can – it's like lawless. They're all like wild. Yeah. Right? But, yeah, I was certainly like – I remember you, I learned how to flip, you know, when you would do the, the, omelet, the omelet flip. But I'd have like five going at the same time, so I would just be flipping wow. omelets on them. Dude. That was a nightmare. I look back on that and I was like, God, I don't know how I did that. I don't know how I did it. Got you through high school. You were twenty years old in high school. No, this is this is I I overdid the math. This was like I was like really. I think I was trying to sound older than I was because of, of the drinking. But I think I was like sixteen, by like sixteen, mm. seventeen. Yeah, the good old days. For some reason, I thought I was older, but I was actually. I didn't realize I started drinking that young. But yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I started smoking at fifteen. Cigarettes or weed? Cigarettes. Nice. I don't, I've never been too big on weed. Yeah. But I mean, I've tried it a couple of times. I just get 
out of control. Out of control how? Like, you can't. Like, last night I took a gummy because I've been working all day. And I, it was a little bit bigger than I should have taken. But I was like, wow, I'm uncomfortably high right now. Mm -hmm. Nothing you can do about that. Can't just drink some water. Can't walk it off. Oh, really? Yeah, if you have one more, you know, with, at least with drinking, you go, I'm coming up to the line. Mm -hmm. I can have some water. I can dial yeah. it back. Or yeah. I can just jump right over that line, yeah. crash on the rocks. Yeah, yeah. Weed is like, well, let's see what happens now. Oh, really? I, yeah, you don't, there's no way to regulate it. You don't know how big of a hit you're taking. Can you take a Xanax and mellow out or no? I don't have any Xanax. Oh. You know, like when you're having a bad trip, they say you can take a Xanax and it'll like cut off whatever that, whatever that is. Does that work with weed? I don't know. Uh, I've had a lot of bad trips, so hmm. it's seven bad trips in a row. Oh, you told me that you tripped for like a year straight or something, didn't a you? A whole summer. So the summer, yeah. After I didn't graduate, I moved into a farmhouse with my best friend, or two of my best friends, uh, and one of their parents, mm -hmm. single mom. It's nice. a nine room farmhouse, barely had plumbing, but they were like renting everybody a room that they could. Their rent was free. Mm -hmm. I was paying 150 bucks a month, and I didn't. I don't think I actually ended up ever paying it. So they eventually asked me to leave. But that whole summer, we were taking uh, three hits. What we thought was three hits of acid three times a week. At the end of the summer, the guy who was selling us the acid was like, who are you selling this acid to? We're like, dude, we're taking it. He's like, you're taking it? <laughs> He's like, dude, you took more than one at a time? We're like, yeah, we were taking all three. He's like, you took? He was like, dude, these are triple dips. Oh, God. We were taking nine hits of acid three times a week for 13 weeks straight. Did that mess you up long term? Yeah, until I was about, well, fucking still. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't feel, I was like twitchy and weird until I was like 26, 27. Really? Yeah. Whew. And even then I wasn't normal. I was just like less socially Were awkward. Were there benefits though? Did you like tripping that much? Did you have any sort of like grand oh, epiphany? Oh, the mushrooms gave you like a greater insight into the universe. No, not acid. much. I understand mushrooms. I'm talking yeah. about triple dip and acid. I mean, I saw, I didn't get any enlightenment out right. of it. I had a great time. Okay. But the, it was like a a connection to like a greater self. It's just like there's more out there. Like yeah. You're tapping into something weird. But with mushrooms, you were like, oh. Yeah. I can really connect with the universe. For and sure. Everything is one thing. The mushroom thing I get. The acid thing I always scare. Even the, maybe it's just the name. They should rebrand the name. Just the word acid. You're like, this is not going to be good. Yeah. The, yeah. Like, I think the best branded drug was ecstasy. Mm-hmm. I mean, for a one-word yeah. name, when you're what it 19 did. years old, yeah. Do you want ex? Yeah, one ecstasy. Yeah. Do you want acid like do, the mm. stuff that the aliens spit? Yeah, the thing <laughs> no. that burned off half of that guy's face. Harvey in Dent. Batman? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm all right. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 The thing that the Joker fell into. Yeah. It's no. All Batman it's versus. all Batman. It's yeah. all I know is yeah. aliens and Batman. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it yeah. worked out for the um, for the Ninja Turtles, or was that? Did it? That was ooze. That was ooze. Yeah, that wasn't acid. That was ooze. Yeah. Ooze. You want ooze? That's a new drug. Yeah. Yo, you want a triple dip ooze? Was ooze around before Nickelodeon? No. Before the slime? Do you think slime came from the Ninja Turtles? Because <laughs> my memory wants to say they're pretty close together. 90s was the or late 80s. Early yeah. 90s was a big time for ooze-related yep. things. A lot of ooze. A lot of ooze going on back then. I don't know. I didn't have cable growing up, so there was no way for me to know. I mean, it's not like we could look it up on the internet or anything. But I Was Ninja phone. Turtles cable? No, it was a movie, right? So the, No, the it was first, a cartoon. Before the live for action? For years, it was a cartoon. Before the live the action? The live action was a little controversial because it was so dark. Mm -hmm. And the cartoon was so... The cartoon was made to sell toys. Yeah. It was just to make to sell toys, and they made a cartoon around the toys. But then they wanted to do a live action movie. Yeah, in the it was the eighties, I think. No, it was not. It doesn't matter. Um, but it was real dark and it was real super like, dark. Yeah, so it was completely opposite of what the show, uh, the cartoon was. Do you remember uh, Shredder's Lair the first time you saw it? Yeah, dude, I saw Ninja Turtles in the theater probably six times. Yeah, it was the craziest, coolest thing I'd ever seen. There was a skate ramp yeah. indoor. It was a skate ramp indoors and a bunch of hoodlums. Free video games. It was awesome pizza everywhere it's like, yeah why wouldn't i join the foot clan i get it yeah mm -hmm. foot clan me up mm -hmm. right right because i don't want to be a turtle no they were losers they hung out in the in the in the yeah. sewers but what about the casey Kasem or whatever What's no it? casey jones yeah dude that guy was cool casey jones is cool whooping hockey ass yeah that's the guy from um hooking up with april o'neill Ooh. yep there's been a lot of good versions of april o'neill's over the years mm -hmm. none better than the cart original cartoon dude, version so hot 
With the yellow jumpsuit? Yeah, dude. I know. To this day. They, they just came up with a new Ninja Turtles uh, secret. Uh, secret? No, it's not a secret. Series. Mm. I tried to watch it. It's a little... They're trying to get the under 10s. Yeah, they always have. It's a kid's cartoon to sell toys. It's not for you and I. <laughs> Dude, once you put Michael Bay on the case, it's not a kid's movie anymore. Oh, the movie's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The micro, Yeah, yeah. Who directed the first three? Well, the f- I don't know. Well, the second one, they lightened up a lot. Secret yeah. of the Ooze, they really rebranded. And the third one, they- Turtles in Time was- That should be erased from time. Yeah. Uh, the video game was popular. So that's why they did the dude. I recently started replaying the video game because my neighbor got the side scroller for like PS five or uh-huh. something. And it is so much fun to sit there with three other dudes. Yeah. Especially when you're all aligned. Like I don't want to fight over who's Donatello. I'm Donatello. I'm Donatello. Dude. Dude. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you this. Uh, my new bass and my, my new Thunderbird and Firebird are coming in in three weeks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Let me play it. I'm just going to hang them on the wall here. Are you really? Yeah. That would look cool. I'm trying to find uh, what year was that? 88 Ninja Turtles movie 1990 Ooh, I was way off uh, 42% Rotten Tomatoes It's not great uh, the, Rotten Tomatoes Doesn't understand us The director was Steve Barron mm. And it made 202 million dollars Dude talk about what, did the, what was the Production budget For puppets Probably not a lot it Wasn't puppets Those were real people <laughs> In there Okay You know what'll really Trip you out Is the voices Of the Ninja Turtles Were not the same people That were wearing the suits I know I know. And one of them is on tour right now. Really? Opening for Limp Biscuit. Oh, that's right. Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. Yeah. That's right. Did you see the viral clips of him doing solos? Yeah, dude. My TikTok, I was, I, I, really, to move on really fast, the budget was $13 million, Box office was $202 million. Yeah, I'll give you $13 for every $200 you give me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, my TikTok algorithm is just Corey Feldman videos. Yeah. And I don't, specifically, it's just like, it knows me for some reason because I it knows me. I didn't know I wanted that and TikTok well, was like you want this how many do you want now I have all of them and I watch all of them multiple times the one where he's doing the guitar solo but it's like backtracked yeah and his fingers aren't even and it's bad it's bad <laughs> it's backtrack good and he's doing guitar mouth it's and I can't stop watching it I I can't either I watched a it was probably twenty minute live performance of course and I just watched the whole thing if I ever see Fred Durst. I want to know. He's a genius. Well, <sighs> Fred Durst is a genius for bringing him as the opening act. Yeah, because everybody's talking about it. Everybody. And he's first. But, he's first of like a five band bill. Oh, so I thought it was are, just them. No, and then no, no. People are getting there early to see the mess that is Corey Feldman. I I just want to know like what the thought process was like. How Probably do you do TikTok. It? I think Limp Biscuit had a resurgence on TikTok. They had that. Yeah. They've had a couple of clips that go really viral, and people are like, "Oh yeah, I guess Limp Biscuit is cool again." Like Creed. I'm not going to give you that one, but sure. Dude, um, Creed did a whole arena tour. I know, uh, but Limp Biscuit became cool on TikTok again because he came. He like reinvented himself as like the, he had the dad. The dad. Did you see that? No. So Limp Biscuit did like a comeback show, and he came back essentially. As an old man, mm-hmm. you remember the Beastie Boy sabotage videos? Yeah, all kind of like that. Okay, where he's just sort of like the, this old guy, and then he kind of goes into the Limp Bizkit stuff, but he's still like got a bad back, and so it right. was he was self aware and kind of making oh, fun of himself. Yeah, and people were like, "We like this." He's not trying to stay Kid Rock for the. He's rest not of the like the cool guy with the backwards. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so people loved it, and so they got this big reunion show and tour mm-hmm. and stuff. And then Feldman, I guess, has been big on TikTok too. Oh, so it makes sense. It's just. It's, it's bad. It's insane. It's this weird Michael Jackson impersonation that he's doing. And right. I want to think that he's in on it and he knows. I don't think that he is. I don't either, but I would, man, I if know. it ever came out, I he know. was like, I knew what I was doing the whole time. It'd be great. I was like, dude, you're the greatest performance artist of our entire generation. But it doesn't generation. read that. Lip Biscuit reads that. Like, yeah. they're in on the joke. Yeah. They always have been, though. Right. Chocolate water and the red hats and all that right. shit. Right. Chocolate starfish and the... The hot dog flavor. Everybody world. tried to figure out what it meant for a long time. It was a diss. It was a pumpkin's diss. It was melancholy and infinite sadness. He was like making, he was sort of making fun of that. Is this real? Yeah. Pumpkins had an album called Melancholy and Infinite Sadness. Why did they, why were they beefing? They weren't, but this is how dumb Fred Durst was. Like that title in and of itself is the joke, right? Melancholy and Infinite Sadness. Like that's like a wink, wink. Like we don't really. People were like, oh, their music's depressing. And it's, you know, there's no singles on it. It's bumming us out, right? 
So melancholy and infinite sadness is sort of like a we're oh, in on the joke, right? I never knew that. Right? We're not this depressed that we're calling it that. It's sort of like a I thought they were. No. I I just read it on the surface. Right. And that's how clueless Durst was, was he was like, <laughs> They're taking themselves too serious. I'm gonna make fun of like, no, we're also making fun of ourselves. So when someone next time someone goes, How dumb are you? I'll go, I'm Fred Durst. Fred dumb. Durst dumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like their new batch of songs people are like the, the label was like these are kind of like sad like this is kind of melancholy to, you know I was like alright well how about we name it this grandiose thing yeah like you're in the pitch meeting and like okay what are we gonna name these real sad songs right it's a little absurd yeah. right and Durst was like uh, they're stupid. I'm gonna make fun of them. Like, no, we're also making fun of us. <laughs> well, okay. What if you flip the coin one more time? Yeah, flip it. And Fred is in on the in on the in on it. That'd be great. Right? It seems like he is now. Yeah. All the stuff on TikTok, he's it's hilarious. He's got one where it's like the new metal cowboy, and he comes out. And, have you seen? It? He's got Wranglers. He's got a cowboy hat, and he's got a button down tight Wrangler shirt. Yeah. Like and he's like, "How y'all doing?" And then he just they go launching the break stuff, but he's doing like a country western thing when he's singing. Dude, I gotta get TikTok back on my phone. It's awesome. I had to delete it. Yeah, it's bad. Once you start scrolling, I know. Dude, they got a ring now. You wear the ring, and you just. No. It's Bluetooth to your phone, so you don't have to do the whole swipe. No, that's just so bad. sit there and you can put your phone on a stand. And that's just... so bad. Yep. I know. I, I I stopped using TikTok for a while, and then I'm, ba I'm back on it now. Yep. I took it off my phone, and then I just started posting on my laptop. Of course. But I'm not scrolling on my laptop. Here's the problem, is that I stopped using TikTok, but then I have like, oh, I'm going to post stand-up clips again, because I have a bunch backlogged. I'll throw them up on TikTok, and as soon as you open it, yeah. TikTok's like, how about this? Yeah, how about this? Corey Feldman moonwalking. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And we're back. Oh, no. We're back with Corey Feldman moonwalking. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude. If you could talk to Corey, what would be your- I wouldn't. I don't think I would enjoy that. No? I don't think I would enjoy that. Uh, I don't know. If he's watching this, Corey, call in if you're watching. Um, I don't think I would. That would be really funny if I just all of a sudden cut in like a- brr, brr. It'd be funny if your phone rang. Right. Uh, I don't think I would enjoy that. I don't think we live in the same. You don't think so? I don't think we live in the same world. Yeah. I wonder who he still hangs out with from back in the day. Because he's always been, like, looking back, go rewatch anything he was in as a kid. Yeah. Like, and then picture being on set with him. No. He's always been the weirdo. He's always been the weirdo. And I know all the comments are like, well, he was molested and, like, he was abused. And so that's why he's weird, which I get. That's, I totally, I'm, like, not trying to be a victim shaming or whatever. He just doesn't seem like a guy that, I, mean, I don't think we would vibe. Yeah. The people are like, well, he's so weird because of X, Y, Z. Like, okay, I understand. I might have to cut this out, but I think he's the type of kid that you only molest once. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't cut that out. He's Please like, don't cut oh, that out. I don't really like hanging out with you very much. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to ride, but... Not <laughs> you seemed cool at first. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, you wake up next to him, you're like... Ah, That's why he's so weird. Yeah. He's just like, we want to play? Uh, it wasn't the molesting. It was like they didn't want to talk to him after. Right. <laughs> Please don't cut that out. I mean, is that, is that going to get me canceled one no, day? Oh, come on. I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. If I'm getting canceled, I've said this before. If, I, if I'm getting canceled, I've already said it. And it's on yeah, the internet. From what? Yeah. Were they going to take away the Isaac Abram show on YouTube? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll just go to Rumble. What are you going to get? Truth Social? Yes. People that like people are like, are you worried about what you're saying? You're going to get canceled. It's like, canceled from what? Right. Well, yeah. What? You have to be big enough to be canceled. There's no, I have 2,000 followers. What are you going to yeah. take? Uh, 1,900. Okay. Been there. Yeah. I was thinking about going back to just using Instagram for pictures, just making that my photography portfolio. Okay. I thought there would be more there. Cut that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What a riff killer oh, this guy. Cool. Wow. Cool. Yeah. You're funny. Hey, you, you take post... pictures. Cool. cool. Here's my food. Yeah. <laughs> it's celebrities. Yeah. I don't know, man. The social media thing, I, I like every like couple weeks, I'm like, all right, this is it. Like, I got to stop. I got to calm down. I got, and then it's like a week later. It's just like, it's crack. Cause you get it one, you get one that does well, and you're like, this could <sighs> change know. my life. I just had one that did three, 300K. Ooh. And, it's it was cool. Like I was getting all these followers, and I was getting that like rush, you know. Mm -hmm. Like ah, oh. some chick who had like three million followers like reposted it. Yeah. So it was like all these like Instagram thoughts that were like adding me on Instagram. I was just like, all right, okay, you know. And then it's like, wait, none of this means anything. No. <laughs> I posted the next one, and I got like two thousand views. I'm like, oh yeah, 
Yeah. And then when you figure out how much money it would take to not buy followers, but like promote, like pay to promote. Yeah. To get to the point where you have a half a million. Yeah. It's not that much money. What do you mean? It's like. Like if I had 10 grand and I put it into my Instagram, would I be famous? In a year from now, you'd have enough to be booked as a headline. Really? Yeah. But does, let you me ask 100, you. have 100,000. Let me ask you this. When you. Say I have a video that I love. I think this is super funny, right? You have a but video it, that you love. It is super funny, right? But it just didn't do. It didn't do anything for whatever reason. The the algorithm just didn't pick it up. Mm -hmm. Can I dump a bunch of money into that? And if I do, is the next one I post going to get buried because they want me to spend more money? Uh, okay, there's three questions in there. So my first answer would be: if you have a video that's not performing, mm -hmm. you probably posted it at the wrong time. Okay. Uh, this literally just happened to me last week. So my uh, I had Mandy Martino on my show last week. Mm -hmm. Well, was, by the time this comes out, it's two weeks ago. Okay. Women episodes, episodes with a woman guest outperform male guests regardless of how famous that male guest sure. is. 10x. Okay. So when I post the- Should I take my shirt off? Please. Show my abs? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're a man now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Implying that you weren't a man before. Yeah. <laughs> now I am. Yeah. I'm a man now. Once I got my first abs, I became a man. Yeah. Um, okay, so women outperform. Let me not perform. So, and I go to post my first clip with Mandy. Mm -hmm. Donut. Mm -hmm. It's about farts. Okay. So I'm like, does YouTube? Right. You start guessing that I yeah. violate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I got, I got enough subscribers right. to at least get a thousand views. Okay. Like zero, fucking zero. And, and it doesn't have a copyright strike. It doesn't have a right. Just zero. Just zero. Yeah, something's wrong. Yeah. So, and I'm like, okay, and this is a world where, and I'm not, I'm bragging, but I usually get eight to ten thousand views every clip. That's the, the baseline that I'm at now. Okay. So if it hits zero, it's like, okay, this just didn't hit the shelf at all. They didn't put it out to anybody. Right. There's probably something wrong with the video. Let me try it on TikTok. TikTok, 100 views. All right. There's clearly something that's making this video. So you go re-edit it, change color. You do something, you slow it down, you speed it up. And, as long as, and I posted it again at my target time, which is 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. Another zero. All right, fuck it. Moving on. Posted another clip, zero. So for a little, I, I'm going on a side tangent now. Let me go back to answer your question. If I pay for a post mm -hmm. and I dump a bunch of money into it, mm -hmm. is the next organic post I post going to be buried because they now they've got me for money? On Facebook, 100%. But what you do... Instagram. They're connected. So I would say yes. Got it. But if this, the, the strategy shouldn't be, I'm going to put $250 on this one clip and not pay any money for the next clip. No, I don't think that. I just think me, generally, would they be like, he gave he gave us money, so now let's bury his organic post so we get more money. One would want to think so, but on Facebook, everything's buried anyway, right? Okay. So, like, unless you get to the top. Yeah. But without a without a marketing strategy, like, posting every day is not a marketing strategy. Right. Posting right, right. every day is just, like, shitting in the wind right. and hoping Here your you leg go. doesn't get brown. Yeah. Right. Which is also, we, we have the same strategy. I'm just posting every day as well, but. I don't post every day. Oh. I don't. I do Thursdays at 6 p.m. That's it. That's it. Once a week? Once a week. Oh. That's all I have. You got more than that. I mean, I don't want to burn everything out, you know? Yeah. I, I'm an everyday at 11 o'clock guy. I used to do morning, but then the last ones that popped, like really popped, were at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. The one that did 5 million and the one that did 300K yes. were after 5. Those are probably performing because they're high quality clips. All of them are high quality. Not the video. Like, I mean, like. They're, they stand out above and beyond the rest of your content. I, I, I don't know, man. There's some stuff that I'm like, this is super viral. This is shorter than that one. This is funnier than that. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, once people start arguing, once people start fighting in the comments, yeah. then you're good. There's a mathematical equation on TikTok. Every like gets you 10 more views. Okay. Every comment, I think it's either 50 or 100 more views. Okay. So you're right. Yeah. Getting them to fucking argue with each Dude, other. The two that went crazy viral were people fighting in the comment section. Of course. So then I started, I was like, all right, let me post something about vaccines. Let me post something about elections. But people didn't seem to fight about those. It was, they just fought on whatever one that I had, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But I, I don't, I don't, I can't figure out social media. Okay. Especially if you're only posting once a week. Yeah. I would get a monthly budget together. Okay. And I would promote on Facebook. Okay. Because once you start buying shit on TikTok, then your account's No, fucked. I don't care about TikTok. So promoting your reels on Facebook, let's say your budget is 50 Ten bucks grand. a month. 10 grand. Yeah. Okay. Over and How long do you want to spend your budget? For the next 40 years. 10 grand. For the, okay, so it's 50 <laughs> bucks a week. I was right. Yeah. 
uh, $12.50 a week is 50 bucks a month. Okay. If you do four weeks, right? Yep. Uh, that'll get you 25,000 impressions a week. But does that translate to followers? Sometimes. Mm. I just think I'm so funny. I just want people to know who I am. Yeah. Well, you have to pay for that. Okay. Like if you made a movie. Yes. And then just. Put it out. Put it out. No one sees it. You, yeah. So you get a market. Right. Interesting. Now, I think you might have a little bit of a different impression because your special did so well. Special did great. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. Thank you. You Four, directed it. Th I did. We've talked about that three times now. Two. One will never come out. I still have that on this The last episode. I know. I'm going to watch it. Too. I'm going to have all my fans hashtag release the release the Justin episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think for both of our sakes. Maybe well, we just talked about Corey Feldman for an hour, so you didn't release it. That's why I'm not releasing this one. <laughs> we just talked about all the kids. Yeah. <laughs> you, I just, the, oh, this is the only way I can get you to on, hang. On, <laughs> I'm ranking children. That's a six. That's a seven and a half. Bring that one down first. That's why he's so weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one right there ain't even worth it. <laughs> now you might get canceled. Yeah. Worth what? Oh, man. Uh, no, this is the only way I can get you to hang out with me, so you got to come That's not true. <laughs> we hung out by the pool the other day. Well, that was because that was fun. somebody was having a birthday party. Yeah, I, I love birthday parties. I would love to be a fly on the wall after I left that birthday party because it was, I, it was a surprise party. Yeah. So I don't know if the birthday boy knew me and Lisa were coming mm. because I, I don't know if his wife was tuned. We shouldn't talk about this. Okay. But- you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, if it yeah. was a surprise, and then I show up, like, that's I wrong. I was, like, making fun of him. I was like, well, you're, you're having a surprise parties when you're pushing 40? What are we doing? He's 31. I know, but I like to round up for, for comedic effect. Yeah. I think after five, you shouldn't have a surprise party. Dude, I love surprise parties. I guess maybe I'm bitter. Maybe no one's ever thrown me a surprise party before. How many friends do you think you have? I have a lot. Really? I actually had this conversation with somebody the other day. If I ever got married, there'd probably be 30 best men. Hmm. I have a lot. Like I'm on the phone probably two out uh, an hour and a half, two hours a day with friends, every day. Oh, I talked to you for an hour yesterday or a couple of days ago. You did? Yeah. You sure it was me? Yeah. You told me about your comedy store performance. That we was talked. two weeks ago. It was not two weeks ago. Yeah, maybe it was. But uh, I have a lot of friends actually. I don't. That's crazy. I know. Because I see people posting like, "Oh, me and the gang going out for," and like even when you went to Vegas, you're like with twelve people. I know. I'm like, I have five friends. I know. No, six now. Sure. And then I'm expecting all these, uh, like, I'm not real social. I like to hang out with the people that I've hung out with. Like, there's the friends, right? Sure. There's your core circle. Yeah. Then there's your acquaintances. Yeah. You, But do you can't consider I have friends? Dude, my birthday party, the, the bar manager of the Rainbow Room was like, dude, how do you have so many, fr like, how do you know so many people? Why don't you produce a show in LA then? <sighs> I don't know. And have all your friends come out. Sure, I can do that. Make it free. Yeah. Maybe. We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, I have a lot of like really, really good friends. My phone's always ringing, dude. Like, you I love it. Have all of your friends. Oh, oh, here's my new theory. I think I told you this on the phone the other day. If all of our comedic friends mm -hmm. liked and commented I know. on all we'd of all our content, we'd, right. all met, we'd all be headliners. I know. It's ridiculous. Like, we're all like, oh, liking your shit's going to make my shit less funny. No, I think a lot of times we just don't see it. Like, if I open Instagram right now, it's. Suggested for you, suggested for you, ad suggested for you. I'm like, I'm not even seeing my friend stuff anymore. You can click on following and it'll only show you your friend stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. You know, back in my day, we didn't have to click on all these <laughs> buttons. Oh, man. It's such a different time now. You're old. I know. I feel old and I'm leaning into it. I like it. I got to start acting my age. I want to start dressing like a stepdad. I wore no black on me at all the other day. Really? I wore gray jeans and a, a green t-shirt. Good for you. I'm actually wearing a different color shirt today just for the podcast. Yeah? I thought I'd be like, I'm like, people are so tired of seeing me like I am just got back from a funeral. <laughs> yeah. They, but, they want to see you look like you just got back from a five-year-old surprise birthday party. <laughs> somebody the other day said I look like an emo Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> you know what you should do is dress like that on your walk to the gym and carry a balloon, and no one will fucking bother you at all, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, so I thought I'd put a pop of color for the Isaac Abrams show That's today. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It matches your head. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. How do I look? You look fantastic. Thanks. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. We would dress. You and I sort of dress the same. It's like black ripped jeans, black t-shirt. Yeah. I've been told that I'm not allowed to wear the skinny jeans anymore. By who? My uh, girlfriend, who's a wardrobe stylist, a, com- a costumer in the film business. Why? I don't know. Her and I have completely different tastes. Yeah. But I think I'm now entering the phase in my life where when I was in high school slash early 20s, and I saw all the guys in their 40s that still dressed and loved metal, like mm-hmm. 80s metal, yeah. hair metal. Yeah. And I was like, ha, right. eh, that dude's stuck in the 80s. Is that us? That's me. I'm not accusing you. Uh-oh. I think you're pretty much a little bit more self-aware than I am. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm that guy. We used to call them uh, paint truck musicians because... Hilarious. They would have their hair down here. Yeah. They'd get off the truck and they'd go right on stage. and be like, this one's by Bon Jovi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. It's like Bon Jovi's not even the hardest of the 80s metal. So what are we supposed to wear? Like cargo cargo shorts and like p- white That's Henleys? So, so now we know what we're going to ask Fred Durst when we see him. How do we dress, bro? Yeah. Dress me, Fred Durst. Oh, no. But you put it in the Princess Leia voice. You're like, dress me, Fred Durst. Oh, no. <laughs> I wear all black because when I'm on the road, it's I can only I only have to bring one thing. Mm-hmm. Right? You can do a whole weekend with one pair of jeans. One pair of jeans, one black shirt. Because mm-hmm. you're only wearing it for 30 minutes or what, you know, an hour a night for the show. Yeah. Doesn't get dirty. Doesn't get wrinkled. Well, I sweat through my shit every night. Well, I'm not bombing every night. So uh, well, I don't sweat as hard as you do. That's, all, that's also <laughs> correct. Um, it's called flop sweat, Isaac. Is yes, what we call that. Flop sweat, dude. I thought that was what was under my fupa. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do sweat a lot. Um, but Well, I had to wear that in, uh, uh, Alaskan 32 degree below uh, freezing dew point leather jacket for the one opening line that I said after you got off stage every night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what's funny to me is like you were doing all those theaters, right? You, you've traveled with big theater comedians and you performed for like 2,000 people. Mm-hmm. And then you told me the other day, you're like, I did a show for like six people. It sucked. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. Welcome to comedy. Yeah. Dude, Raj Bellani would be so proud of me. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was so mad. And he was like, wait a minute, you only do theaters? I'm like, yeah, what do you do? He's yeah, I'm like, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know. He's like, you're open micing in a theater? I'm like, I don't have any time. <laughs> I don't have any other time. Remember when I took you to perform in the back of a pizza restaurant in Fresno? Yeah, I like, ate shit. Like, comedy sucks. Yeah, I was reevaluating my whole life. I was, I was like, like, yeah, this is comedy, bro. I don't understand what it's like, like to not get a massive opportunity right out of the gate. <laughs> Where are the ushers? <laughs> yeah. Where's my green room? This lasagna sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally ate shit. And then the promoter was like, you can come back here anytime. And yeah. I was like, uh, uh-huh. you don't know what you're going to do. Right. Is that what comedy's like yeah. everywhere? I right, just be confident. Yeah. If you come in with swag, it doesn't matter what you do on stage. They're just like, oh, this guy carries himself. Like, they may never even, I don't even think he watched your set. Is anger swag? Yeah. Oh, you okay. were grumpy. You were pissed. Yeah. You were yelling riding about- a car with you for six hours up there. <laughs> no radio, no bumper. Yeah. I'm like begging you to go and then I make it miserable for you the whole time. Justin, can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Right. And then you get in the car. I'm like, man, fuck this. Fuck <sighs> you. Why this am I going to suck? <laughs> this better be fun. I'm like, you asked to do this. <laughs> My buddy wanted to come. I bumped him so you could come. No. Yeah. Oh, how many more favors do I have? You're running. You're running thin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we were going to trade jokes for the special, but I didn't get any jokes, so I have to just go to Fresno with you every once Wait, what do you mean? You told me that you were going to help me write some jokes. After. I have. No, that was on the road. Those are different jokes. I need new. Oh, oh you yeah, need, I need new, special oh, jokes. Got I need, like, it. Got LA, it. You're gonna help me write my LA set. Oh, I see. I if see. I help me, I thought you were just gonna hand me a piece of paper and be I like, see. "Here are your fucking jokes." I would love to do that. I like writing jokes for people. Yeah, I figured out that the only way I'm gonna make it is to get a whole bunch of money together mm-hmm. and do the Kevin Hart thing where I have writers. Mm. I don't think Kevin Hart has writers. I think he has punch up guys. He has twelve writers. Because I saw Kevin Hart at Flappers and he did four shows. And it was all his material, but he had a team of writers like taking notes on what he was saying. And then they went to the back, compared notes, added tag structure. And then he came back and then, did, you know, and by the fourth show, it was like dialed in. Those are the same guys that gave him his premises. You think? I know. I know one of them. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I've worked at his uh, compound. It seemed very Kevin Hart. It, well, they're writing in his voice. Yeah, I know. But it was like personal stuff. It was like he went to a barbecue and he's Kevin Hart at the barbecue. Okay. Interesting. I would look. I, I know. I know what I think. I know, and then I, I wouldn't want that. I did a joke. <clears throat> I was doing a show, and a guy had a joke that was like similar to a joke that I already had, and like he didn't know me. I didn't know him. And I've never told the joke. It's just like not. I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. 
It just doesn't feel right. I think that if the right people knew my voice, right? Yeah. Like if let's say I wrote, wrote say I wrote one actual joke, which I haven't done. That'd be, my, that'd my, be a stretch. Right. <laughs> And then I could take that one joke and I could take the real funny people like you and other writers and be like, okay, see this one thing? I yeah, have? make it into a bit. Do other stuff like this. <laughs> right. You like, mean like, you're talking about AI. Yeah. I think you're talking about chat GPT. Yeah. Go home and call your ex-girlfriend, any of them, and then write some angry shit. Right. Maybe call uh, an old uh, relative you haven't talked to in a while. Anybody that makes you mad. Right. As soon as you get off the phone, write down your first thought. Bring it to me. Call debt collectors. <laughs> yeah. Um. It just feel I don't know I'd feel like ugh. you were telling us like somebody gave me a tag and it like did great like it was better than the joke I wrote and I was like God damn it you ever had a, somebody give you a tag and it didn't work and yeah. then when you <laughs> didn't use it anymore or asked them about it they got upset with you for three days straight no no <laughs> that's never happened to you no it's never happened to oh, me okay but it's like you know what I think is funny you know I don't know like hey this is funny you should say that and then it doesn't work it's like well I thought it was funny I uh was positive so i was watching uh chris D'Elia, scandal appreciated and noticed not appreciated but recognized okay we don't just say chris D'Elia. chris D'Elia. yeah and uh he was doing this bit and I, I had i swear to god did this act out and it was right when um that korean show with the 100 people on it that are all trying to win the money squid game squid games it was a perfect squid games tag and i was like oh and this is right when i just like started to socialize and it was okay for me to be in the green room and I was and I was talking to a friend of him his I was like oh I really want to give Chris a tag he's like don't do it he hates it he'll throw the whole joke away oh. and I was like okay and I was just waiting for him to come around to that realization on his own I watched the joke get better and better and better and better every week get longer and longer and longer I'm like oh he's gonna he's gotta I mean, it's obvious he's gotta put squid games in he's gotta put squid games in right never did it never told him I haven't talked to him in two years Maybe he did, and he was like, "It's too easy because people, anyone else, could think of it." Or I could think if I could think of it. Anybody, like Isaac thought of it. I'm not going to use it. If the photographer in the back of the room can come up with a tag, <laughs> right? I would throw the whole thing away. Too easy. You ever have an audience member say the punchline before you do it, and you're like, "God damn it!" Yeah. What are you talking about? Have I ever not had them figure my shit out before I was in the middle of a sentence, dude? <laughs> it's the. It, uh, here's where it's the worst for me. I don't want to speak for you. The worst for me is when someone in the front row of a 2,000 seat theater says it yeah. and no one else does it and you bail on the joke and it looks like you just got halfway through a joke and went, ah, fuck it. I saw that happen to you one time. Yes! There was one guy yeah. who said it no one else heard no. it and you're like, well, fuck that joke. <laughs> <laughs> the people on the balcony are like, do you just have a meltdown? What's happening? It's this Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> you moonwalk off stage. I just start soloing when there's no music. <laughs> you look at, The guy said the thing and you were like, <sighs> well, you ruined that one, bud. And then you, <laughs> three thousand people didn't hear it. What's this guy do? Is his art? Uh, is, he, is he open micing in a theater? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Raj Balani comes out with the, I know. the shepherd's hook. Yeah, and that's what I've been it. saying. Uh, yeah, I've seen you do that. Or like a guy will say something and you just bite his head off for no reason. Thanks a lot, buddy. You ruined that joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was early days. <laughs> that was the restaurant in uh, Fresno. That was recent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the back. I'm like, Isaac, no. Uh, no one else heard it. I, well, here's the thing. I get it. I should not watch <laughs> the show. Yes, you should. No. You should absolutely I watch zone, the show. I zone in on audience members, and I'm like, I fucking hate that well, guy. Okay, but don't do that part. Well, I can't help that part. Comedians that don't watch the whole show. That's not me. Oh. Well, I, I don't know. I should have turned my ringer off. You should have. Is that wifey? Yeah. It's one She's of my going friends to see calling. The Beach Boys tonight. I'm sorry. Aren't they like 90? They are, but John Stamos is drumming. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I got out of it. Good for you. Uh, I don't like going to the Greek. Ooh, the Greek's the worst, dude. No, it's better than the bowl. Is it? Mm -hmm. Dude, the sound there is trash. Well. Dude, we saw a show there and they were screaming, turn it up. Oh, shit. Yeah, the decibels were so low. I know there's a noise, noise curfew because of the residents, but it was like, every time I've been there, it's been like really, really low. Hmm. It's a bummer. Yeah. There's just 16,000 less people to deal with than the bowl. The bowl does sound better. Bowl sounds a lot. Just the outside venues in, in LA are not good for me. Yeah. I've never seen an outside. I've never been to the bowl or the Greek. I'm like, that was great. Yeah. My first bowl show was the Who. How was it? 
Uh, so you know, up, 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 way I do. up. Yeah, it's normally where I'm at. Yeah, I, I'm not used to it up there. I'm mm. front row or side stage. Sure. <laughs> I get it. You know, do you? No, I don't. I get it. I get those tickets. Is what I get. Ooh. And uh, there's a guy, two rows up, and maybe ten people over, just jamming on harmonica, jamming, and everybody's staring at him, but nobody's saying anything to him. Like with the band? Yes. <laughs> and I'm he like, like, got kicked out years before. I'm like, hey. Is anybody else going to say anything? Right. And everybody's like, no. And I go, hey, buddy. <laughs> right. Yeah. The people we paid for? Yeah. I was like, take it outside. <laughs> <laughs> but he is outside. Yeah. He's like, I am. I went to the bathroom. He left. And everybody everybody in the section clapped. Okay. I went to the bathroom. He's sitting by a bush, you know, with those little planters that he could, and just, burr, 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 just fucking harmonicking his little heart out. Oh, my God. But like. I've never seen that before. I, I haven't seen it since. He brought his own instrument to a Who concert? Yeah, and they don't even have harmonica in their songs. <laughs> That's why. If it was Blues Travel, I'd be like, all right, it's getting lost under the John Popper harmonica. Right. But It's a uh, interactive experience where they've hired harmonica people to go around. Yeah. That's crazy. It's, it is crazy. <laughs> he goes, you know what the Who needs? Harmonica solo. Yeah. I got it handled. And then he pulls a cowbell out of his back oh, pocket. Oh, no, that would have been funny. <laughs> Harmonica cowbell. No, don't. He's got the kick drum. <laughs> He's doing the one-man show. Oh, my God. <laughs> what year? What years was that where it was like the former lead singer of a band would just get a kick drum and a guitar, yeah. and then they would just try and be that one-man band thing? Right, exactly. That was like 2014 to 2018. It's right when Ninja Turtles came out. Mm-hmm. Michael Bay's version. What, are we, what were we talking about right before that, right before your phone rang? There was a point that we were saying about... Oh, co yes, comedians should be in the room. You should watch oh, what's going on at all times. I don't know. I think you should. I think... I <sighs> Talk to me. At a restaurant show like that... Maybe not. All I'm doing is picking out somebody that I, I know is going to piss me off. But if I go out there and I haven't watched it, and then I'm like... like I, the, the guy in the front row said the same thing to every single comic. So I was preparing on what I was going to say to him when he said it to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But also, it's like you've seen the thing where it's like they do crowd work, right? Mm -hmm. And they, but like nine comics have done crowd work. And by the time the 10th comic comes up, the guy's like, I already told you, like, this is my wife. We met in Fort Worth. Yeah. I work at, you know what I mean? He's right. already been talked to so many times. Right. But because no one's in the room watching. Well, at my last show at the lab, there was a guy in the front row who was talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. He was one of those guys that repeats the punchline, says, ha ha ha, you know? But then he would say stuff and everyone would go in on like, yeah, you're this, you're that. You're... Nobody bothered to just actually speak to him. Yeah. So and I was like the seventh or eighth comic to go up. And I was just like, okay, man, you're clearly making this about you. What's your deal? And he was like, oh, I just got stationed here with Space Force. And I was like. Space Force? Yeah. That's what I said. And that, so I, I, I turned to the side. I'm like, Rocky, I'm going to need another 10 minutes to talk to Space Force over here. Ah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think I told you that offline, but. So it, I, yes, I'm. I'm saying I don't make good points when I'm caffeinated. I'm disagreeing with my former statement. You are. You do need to be in the room, but I need to find a way to not guess, get mad at the audience. I guess got to <laughs> calm my anger down. I, I think that's. I think that's the yeah. root of all this. I cannot yeah. be in the room because I'm going to hate every one of them. I don't know if that's the answer. Well, I, I uh, these calming pills that I'm taking from Target. Yeah. What an eye roll that was. Well, the last sentence is from Target. Okay, where do you get your calming pills from? I don't have calming pills. <laughs> I'm, I'm the angry guy that assumes everyone else is taking something to not be this angry the all the angriest time. angriest. <laughs> where are you taking your calming pills from? I don't. I know where my calming pills are coming. Where are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like they're working real well, Isaac. Dude, I'm on nine of them. I'm so calm. <laughs> uh, my blood pressure is down just a little bit. Thank God. What do I need limes and radishes for? <laughs> that wasn't that bad. It, okay, let me reenact it. Let me do my version now that you've misrepresented me. Oh, interesting. There's a few limes <laughs> and radishes here. <laughs> you put your glasses on. Oh, oh what a conundrum we have here. Well, these additional fruits and vegetables are rather intriguing. Interesting. <laughs> Never had a radish with tacos before. <laughs> You're oh, okay. Of those two, you're here. No, you're here at all times. No, you've got a vape and a large coffee. And you're like, they, I don't know why I'm. They work against each other. No, they don't. They're best friends. <laughs> They're counteracting your target happy pills. Oh, yeah. Is there an, what? What are they called? <laughs> They're called uh, 
relaxation. Like, <laughs> or, uh, no, they're called <laughs> st- uh, stop, stop. stressful release. Okay. Yeah. What's in them? Mushroom stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I uh, Quanda mushrooms or something. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I'm also taking a, a bunch of beetroot and some CQ10. That's probably what it is. What the beetroot and the other one making my blood pressure go? Probably. You yeah. so you told me you were eating a lot of vegetables. I am. It's probably what it is. I'm also working out for an hour a day. That's definitely what it is. Okay. Not the, the so happy angry? pills from Target that you're selling us no, on. No, they make me calmer. You're, but you're not. I am. You're not. Oh, but how much more angry would I be if I didn't have them? <laughs> You think I'm elevated now? <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the light version. <laughs> I like that you're never really angry. That's always like fake anger. It's not fake. It, it, but you know, you realize, realize how I'm absurd pros- you realize how absurd it is, and you're like, yeah, yeah. I you, bail on it because then I realize you, no one else is mad about. Right, you bail on it because you're like, oh, this isn't a thing. <laughs> oh, no one's rowing down this river with me. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you guys also aren't mad at yellow lights <laughs> and radishes. <Yeah. laughs> I go back to '80s comedy or '90s Seinfeld. I'm like, what's the deal with radishes? Hey, you, I don't like your shirt front row. <laughs> Sorry, I was in the room when the other comics were on. What's your problem wearing a shirt in here? What are you doing? Uh, Sorry, I didn't go to Target today. I'm a little high strung. Yeah. Your wife's a fucking whore. What? Yeah, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't, sorry. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like your shirt. No, that's my bad. I didn't have my beat root today. Yeah. But I did beat my root. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Call number five. Yeah. Well, 10132. With only a few things to cut out. No, as is. No, I'm not going to leave the phone call in. Yeah, it's real. I should have answered it. You should have. And then we should have. That would have been Morning Zoo Radio. Right. And then she would have been like, I just called to tell you your dick small was breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wait, is that Justin? Let me talk to Justin for a second. <laughs> I just want to let you know your dick's big. We're getting together. She breaks up with me on speakerphone and asks you out in the same phone call. Dude, could you imagine? I picture it a lot Isaac gets cooked on his own show (laughs) that's the name of this episode (laughs) cooking the cooking Isaac Abrams with Justin Mother cucked by Justin that's the name of your podcast Justin cuckers (laughs) I just bring comics have to bring their girlfriends on yeah and you see if you can put the moves on them right in front of them yeah Uh, thanks for watching thanks for having me oh thanks for being here for the third time second good to see you once this summer no, I just, I, I, it's weird. And you've been doing this for 20 years. But to me, it's weird to spend 120 hours straight with somebody. Yeah. Three weeks a month. Yeah. And then not see them for like four months. You're busy. You're a busy guy. I'm not busy. I'm not doing anything. Then come co host the show with okay. me. Okay. Once a week. I, right down I'm here. literally not doing anything. All right. You're in the beach. You're working on movies and commercials is that what it looks that? like is yeah that, it looks like i'm busy and important and rich yeah. and successful yeah. and handsome i don't do anything come on you're the one with the friends i have friends i don't have any friends hang out with my friends come hang out all right i want to be your friend come hang out with us went to a concert last night went to a movie the night before yeah i'll bring Go the to dinner tomorrow i'll bring the booze to the next yeah function come tomorrow where are you going tomorrow Panda not ex- No I already made that joke I already made the joke The Panda Inn In Pasadena uh, Is that a Motel for pandas Yeah You get to pick The one you want oh, Room 208 yeah. Alright buddy Okay man uh, Thanks for watching everybody We'll see you Watch next my time. special Yes If you haven't If you want not one of the 400,000 people that has already seen it Justin Foster Short King What <laughs> You're combining your specials I Bald am. King Bald King Bald King Bald King Fucking, fucking cheap date. Cheap date. Goodbye. Bye. This show's a piece of shit.